This time out, we're gonna talk effects while mixing Adobe Atmos. I'm gonna show you how to use your favorite stereo plugins to create surround reverbs and delays. All right, today we're talking effects. The challenge, right? It takes some routing, it takes some uh, forethought and how you want those effects to spill out in the room, and that's what I'm gonna show you. If you want just an easy path where you could create a 706 aux inside your session, you can load up Liquid Sonics uh, or a compatible plugin that um, takes care of the multi-channel output format, and you're good to go. That's the easiest path. But in the instance of you not wanting to buy some plugins, you need to get crafty today. I'm gonna to show you how to do uh, this with using your favorite stereo effects. So let's dive in. All right, let's head over to the DAW and I'll show you how to do this. <clears throat> All right, so we're looking at my session here. Um, let's just pay attention to lead vocal A, background vocal A. These are two stems. They are dry stems, just to, as a note. I often request dry vocal stems. The lead vocal effects here, you see um, lead vocal effects A and B. Those are actually the pre-fader printed vocal effects um, from the mix that I did. <laughs> I almost said from the client. So when I prep this mix, I do a lead vocal. Um, I typically print a vocal stem with the effects for reference, and then I print a dry vocal stem and the effects separate. It's always nice to have. It's not always something you get, but you could request that from clients or from people. That said, my routing is a little different here. Um, I had an effort to try to get this out to YouTube, but I have to figure that out. It's really interesting trying to show Dolby Atmos music in stereo formats, things like YouTube. Um, so bear with me here. You're not going to hear any audio, but I'm going to show you how to do the routing. You can do your test on your own, and we'll go from there. So as you can see, this vocal track, let's just start. I've got some minimal decapitator, something I'm enjoying doing across my mixes, a little Mog EQ, just adding some air band. It's almost like a faux mastering for me right now when I'm doing Dolby Atmos. And then sometimes um, the nature of Atmos um, you know, we're not constricted by this 10 pound bag and shoving 20 pounds of information in it. So I often find that there's a little bit more work that needs to be done, DSing, those sort of things um, that comes in. So I got a little DSing going on in this vocal. From there, vocals going out to uh, a parallel idea here, which is just parallel left and right. It's something I'm experimenting with. From there, we're sending out to this 480 verb. So in this song, I had the delays nice um, from the printed effects, and I'm using those, even though they're muted here. But I really wanted to create a new reverb for this song. So what I do, let's, let's try dive in here, and I'll show you. So I have a basic folder track for my effects, and then I have multiple stereo instances. So as you can see, we're gonna go one by one. I'll pull the curtain back here. Let's just talk about this first instance, 480 LR, left and right. So what I'm doing first is, is doing a little EQ before the signal hits the reverb, pretty straightforward, some filtering. And then here's the trick. When I pull this back, I'll show you all these together. The start um, of the signal, it's not delayed. So you could easily do this uh, if you're using a reverb, you could use pre-delay, a delay, you could use pre-delay, that sort of thing, right? Well, what I'm doing on this reverb is, I love this 480. I'm essentially putting a delay before the reverb, which acts at pre, as pre-delay. Pre and then that one send, that input, is the same input for all these auxes. So the routing of these aux tracks spill the reverb from front to back. <clears throat> and that's done by pre-delay. 
takes a little bit. You can mess with the math. Uh, if you're, you can use tempo sync, that sort of stuff. Um, there's a great app called Music Math. I'll try to link it in the description for you. Uh, I use it on my phone often. This one, I believe I just dialed it in by ear. So let's take a look. No pre-delay on the L and R, or the left and right. And then as we get into the next, uh, which is my front highs, and I'll show you the routing. There's no pre-delay on that. The reverbs across the board are all the same. So in this song, I liked the medium hall plus stage. It's all the same. 1.7, shape, speaker, or I think a spread, not speaker, excuse me, size. So I'm gonna close the reverb here. You see those are all the same. It's really the difference between the auxes and the input signal hitting those auxes is what spills the reverb from front to back. Okay, so now let's jump into the third one. So as you can see on my side surrounds, I have about 75 milliseconds of pre-delay before that reverb takes place. And then on the rear highs, I'm pre-delaying that signal about 120 milliseconds. And then same for the rear lows or the rear surrounds. Pretty simple. Um, now let's get into the routing because that's where it gets a little complex. If you've seen my Obed videos, I'm taking advantage of that technique here. And that's essentially what this is all about. So I'm gonna pop open my IO and show you the bus config. As you can see, it's just a standard mono input, so a mono bus. And then the Obed, which is similar to what we created, right? You saw this in the other video, how I added the sub paths. Now let's talk about something real quick. Why 706? Well, you don't need to send your effects to a sub, right? So that's why you're gonna see a 7.0, or if you wanted to create a 5.0 or a 5, uh, 5 .0, excuse me, um, seven, you wouldn't create, you wouldn't need to create a seven one or a nine one six or a nine one four for something like this. This saves you from routing that reverb into that LFE channel. Just wanted to show that. And then essentially these auxes just get that assignment. We're coming out into the stereo on the first one. So again, that's my seven Oh six Obed technique. Now I'm in Pro Tools Studio, that's my max track width. If you have Pro Tools Ultimate, I think that's what it's called. Uh, forgive me, since I don't own it, I'm, I could be wrong on that. You could do a 906, you know, that would be appropriate. Uh, and then down the line, if we come into the front highs, you can see that maps to the front high path that I've created. And now these are output assignments. Um, now, Obed Sides, and that essentially is the routing. Pretty simple input to a bus. It could be mono, stereo, depending on uh, whatever your main vocal source is. I'm using stereo stems, so uh, it it's fine either way. And then down the line here for the 480 rear high, that's the Obed mapping there. And lastly, I have the, row, um, the Obed rear low. So there you go, that's how you can use your favorite stereo plugins when mixing music for Dolby Atmos. I know it's difficult to get audio from a DAW into a forum like YouTube, but trust me, if you take a look at the routing, it'll work. Do your own experiments, and let me know if you have any questions. As always, thanks for watching. If this one helped you, hit that like and subscribe button for me, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.